Donald Trump. His opinion that Muslims overseas should be temporarily suspended from coming to the USA has ignited perhaps the most intense political firestorm we've ever seen. Overnight, Bloomberg conducted an internet poll of about 600 folks. 37% agree with Trump overall, 50% oppose. But when you break it down to Republican primary voters, 65% agree, 22% dissent. Joining us now from his campaign headquarters here in New York City is Donald Trump. So just to get you on the record, if you are elected president, what will you do regarding Muslims, non-American citizens, traveling to the USA? What will you do? Very simple. First of all, as you know, I have many good friends who are Muslims. They're terrific people, and they are calling me on an hourly basis, thanking me for bringing up this point. I would try and find out what is going on. Why the hatred? Why are people willing to fly planes into the World Trade Center? Why did those two people last week, they get married? Why did they, and you explain this to me, go into a room and start shooting everybody, Bill? It's a very, very serious problem and somebody had to bring it up now maybe it's not politically correct to do it but somebody had to bring it up and a lot of people are very thankful that i did it yeah but you didn't answer my question what would you do to muslims overseas vis-a-vis -vis coming to the usa i would i would number one i try and get to the bottom of what's going All right, we on got i that. would set up a very strong wait a minute bill I would set up a very strong system, and I'm very happy that tonight, because last night, I'm not sure it was mentioned, but you said this is a temporary system. I would set up a very, it's a temporary ban on not everybody, but many. I would set up a system to see who qualifies to come in, who doesn't, until we come down with the answer All as right, to that's what's really, happening you know, with that the would Muslim be, population. With millions of people traveling to the United States for business and pleasure and everything like that, to, to scrutinize every one of them in that way would almost be impossible. Well, let me let's let's advance the story tonight. The I, I assume it would be I assume but it would be it would be something that has to be done. All right. I assume that if you're president, the goal is to defeat the jihad. Is that correct? That's the goal. Yes. Okay. Correct. All right. Correct. Now, would you see, as I said last night, that you need Arab Muslim nations to help the United States defeat the jihad? Would you see that? No, I don't, but I do you think don't. it would be very helpful. And no, but I do think it would be very, very helpful. All right, well, how does it help then if you say to the king of Jordan, you and all your people can't come here for a while until I sort it out? Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Egypt, their government is cooperating against ISIS with us. Turkey, their government is letting us land planes there. How is that helpful to ban people from all of those countries from coming here? It doesn't seem to be helpful Bill, to when, defeating the jihad. When you say when you say their governments are letting us, we are paying a very big price to have governments let us do anything. But still, we have people they don't have to allow don't us to use bases in Turkey. If you say all Excuse Turks me. can't come here, Excuse me. you're not going to have those we bases. We are paying we are paying a very big price everything we get we pay a big price for we get nothing for nothing i watched president obama's speech last week it was a disgrace he frankly when it ended i said is that all there is i couldn't even believe it but i watched that speech last night it was a the other night it was a total disgrace we have a president that doesn't have a clue he doesn't know what's going on all i'm doing is bringing a situation to the forefront that everybody is talking about and nobody wants to do anything right. about it when you look at what's happening in this country with all of the other problems we have and that includes migration where they want thousands of people to come into our country that we don't know who they are we have to do something and about I it, agree Bill. with you that that people coming here for permanent residency have to be vetted and it, the burden is on them to prove that they're harmless but I disagree with you uh, in the sense that if you say no Muslims can travel here from overseas, you're hurting the United States' position against ISIS. We need the friendly Muslim nations. You can't insult them like that. You can't. Bill, I disagree. People have to be vetted. They have to be perfectly You can vet vetted. them, but you we can't insult the whole coming. religion. We're not insulting. This is about security. It's not about religion. This is about security. We cannot allow people to come into this country that have 
horrible things in their mind. All right, everybody's going with that. on. You did, I don't think you thought through the unintended consequences of banning an entire religion from coming to the United States. Just my opinion. Let me Bill, let me roll Bill, something for Bill, you. Go ahead. I thought Go through ahead. everything. All believe right. me. Okay. I thought through everything. Look at what's happening. I thought through everything. And again. I've had calls from friends of mine who happen to be right, Muslim saying you're the only one with the courage. Bill, they said you're the only one with the courage to say it. They all know what I'm saying is true. We want to win the war against ISIS and the jihad. You've correct. got to enlist the Muslim nations to do it. Insulting them en masse is not the way. Now, I want you to react to Hillary Clinton. Go. Donald Trump, the Republican frontrunner has made a name for himself in the last months by trafficking in prejudice and paranoia. His latest insult is his call to stop all Muslims from entering the United States. This is both a shameless and a dangerous idea. All right, you say? Hillary Clinton is a joke. I watch her. I've been watching her for years. She was the worst secretary of state in history. She's the one that caused this problem between her and Obama and their policies. That's why you have the migration. I mean, she is a disaster. Look at what happened with Libya. Look at what happened with your ambassador. Look at what happened with Benghazi. Look at all of the problems that she's caused. She's a big factor in this. And then I hear her, holier than thou, Donald Trump. Look, Hillary's going to lose. The Fox poll came out. I'm leading. I'm beating her by a lot. I'm beating everybody, actually, by a lot, including all of the Republicans. But the last person she wants to run against, and I know this for a fact, is me. Because, look, I understand Hillary Clinton. First of all, she doesn't have the strength or the stamina to be president. She does not have the strength or the stamina. She will do a... T and if we have another four years of Barack Obama, which is basically what she represents, we have a lot of problems. You think we have problems now? We won't have a country left. Okay, now, what she's playing to is two, two things. She's trying to get independent voters to say that Donald Trump's uh, a kook, all right, and he's an extremist. That's number one. But number two is the point that she uh, makes is that you help ISIS by portraying the United States as anti-Muslim. That actually helps the extremists recruit you see that point? No, I don't see it at all. I don't see it at all. The last person that ISIS wants in that position, the position of president, is Donald Trump. That I can tell you. Just like the last person that Hillary Clinton wants to run against is Donald Trump. You will see that. But right now I'm focused on the Republicans, frankly. But you look at polls and you look at what's happening. She doesn't want to do it, but I do sort of smile. It's a joke. When she gets up and talks, she's caused many of these problems, Bill. All right. Now, on the Republican side, you got Dick Cheney, um, you got uh, Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, and a bevy of other people. I, you know, your competitors, okay, we, we know they're going to come after you. But people who don't have a dog in the fight, like Cheney, they're all saying that this is an extremist point of view. You're going to alienate the Muslim world. That's going to come back to hurt America. How do you react to a guy like Cheney? Excuse me, extremist point of view. I was against the war in Iraq in 2003, 2004. But let's keep it I said, here. Don't do it. Let's keep now, it here. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cheney's the one that started the war in Iraq. You talk about an extremist. I mean, Cheney started the war in Iraq, which should have never been started, because as I said then, and I say now, you will destabilize the Middle East. Somebody calls me an extremist. I am not an extremist. I'm the opposite. I'm somebody that understands what's going on. When you look at what happened with Iraq, and the war in Iraq, which should have never been started, and then I'm called an extremist? I don't think so, Bill. All right. So you reject that, um, Cheney and uh, the Speaker and all of that criticism by saying well, well, this is Bill, bad for the Just so you understand. Just so you understand. This was not supposed to happen. Trump was not going to run. Everybody said he's never going to run. And then if he did run, he's just going to, you know, have fun for a couple of months and maybe even a couple of weeks. He's going to just take it nice and easy. He's really not because, you know, he doesn't really want to. Well, not only did I run, I ran very seriously. I'm winning by 20 points, 21 points, 15 points. I'm winning every single poll. State, I'm winning. 
uh, national I'm winning, and this was not supposed to happen to them. All right. The establishment is they very don't like upset. You. Okay. Well, I, I know how no, that is. I would say probably the establishment not. doesn't like me yeah, either. You know how so. it is. Okay. I agree with well, that. We're also in the same boat. We're going to hold Mr. Trump over against his will for another segment. Talk about how he's processing all the personal attacks on him. Then Lou Dobbs and Stuart Varney have some thoughts on the Muslim controversy, and the factor will be right back. Continuing now with Donald Trump, who rejoins us from his New York City headquarters. So the Philadelphia Daily News, a tabloid, puts you on page one looking like Hitler. Does that kind of stuff bother you personally? Certainly I don't like it. I think it's disgraceful that they're allowed to do it. I am a person that is, you know, I'm in the forefront of something that's never, I guess, been done before. I've been called by very, very respected writers saying, They've never seen anything like this happen in American politics. So a lot of people don't like it. That's a failing newspaper. It won't be in business much longer, from what I understand. And you have many other failing newspapers, and they write, and they hope. But, you know, they're hoping against the wrong person. Look, my whole theme is make America great again. That's what I want to do, Bill. That's all I care about. Okay, and, and I don't care about anything. And that's I why, want to make America great and again. And that's why you've been successful so far. But the strategy now is to call you Adolf. Um, NBC, their cable arm, did it all, all night last night. Uh, as you mentioned, a few other failing newspapers are painting you as uh, Joseph McCarthy or worse. Um, does this affect your family, number one, and your business, number two. Well, first of all, Bill, you know, just so we can really say it, I've also been treated extremely fairly by many of the media. And, you know, I wouldn't say a majority, but I've been treated very fairly. I've been given great credit for what I've accomplished. And, you know, I have to say that some of the media has been extremely fair. And actually to a point where I'm actually surprised by it. Yes, it affects my family. They don't like seeing their father or their husband ridiculed in newspapers. But in the end, they're very smart people. And they say, well, wait a minute, they're after you because you're up by 20 points and you've done something that's never been done before in American politics. So I think pretty much they understand. All right. But, but they're trying to brand you and you're the master at branding. All right. And so you understand what the, what the subtext here is. They're trying to brand you as a fascist, all right, as a person who would violate human rights, as a bigot, as a Nazi. And they're hoping that brand will stick, at least in some people's minds. So your family, to their credit, as, you, as you're saying, is smart enough to understand what is in play. But your business, an overseas business, all of that, if you don't prevail, that may be affected. That could be affected, Bill, but you know what? I built an amazing company. I'm a very rich person. I'm self-funding my own campaign, and frankly, I'm putting up my own money. And if I lose some businesses overseas, it doesn't have any impact on me whatsoever. What I'm doing right now, Bill, is far more important than any single business that I own. And I could be affected by business. I don't really care. I'm not a public company. I have a private company. It turned out to be far more valuable than anybody believed when I did the filings in the FEC. I mean, it turned out to be far more valuable. I built a great company with great assets. You know some of these assets. And very few people have done what I've been able to do. Honestly, if some of the business is affected, it's not important to me. What is important is that we get the word out, All right. that we make America great again, and that we have security for our country. Our country is not secure, Bill. They're pouring across the southern border. We're going to build a wall. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. We're going to stop <laughs> drugs from coming across. Okay. All of We're these back things to are the first happen. announcement Don't now. But I, well, I got one happen. more very serious question here. You mentioned the establishment Republicans don't like you, and that's true. They don't. If you don't get the delegate count, to put you over the top, you go to the convention, okay? And then the convention brokers do what they do. There's a good chance you're not going to get as many delegates to give you the nomination. So if they deny the nomination to you, which is very, very possible, are you going to run on a third party ticket, thereby handing the election to Hillary Clinton? Uh, I think that I will get the delegates. I'm winning in Iowa okay, big. I'm winning in South Carolina. I'm winning in New Hampshire big. If you okay, don't. I'll, 
If I'm treated fairly, I would never do it. If I'm not treated fairly, I might very well do it. All right. If because you do frankly, it, my it's deal president, was, it's president my deal was I have to be treated fairly. All right. Well, who knows? But my deal was I have to be treated fairly. If the Republicans treat me fairly, the so-called establishment, of which I was a member about seven months ago, you understand that, right? Once I decided to run, I was no longer a member of the establishment. Okay. But I found the establishment has not been as smart as people thought, and you see what's happened to the establishment. Look. We have to do the right thing, and we have to be truthful, and we have to say what the problems are. That's what I'm doing, and that's why I'm winning. And the people out there that vote, they're agreeing with what I'm saying, and that's more important than the establishment. Okay. Donald, always a pleasure to have you on, and we appreciate you taking the time. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.